Well, it's Cords and Coffee and backed by popular demand. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Randy Buckner. So this is, um, we're, we're smack dab in the middle of fall and down where we live. Uh, today feels like fall. Finally. Yeah, which is all right. No complaints. I love fall. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just did um, Moon Dance. Oh, yeah. With old Joe Dillstrom. And there's a line in there about uh, October skies. And so that happened to be at the beginning of this month. And so I thought we should keep this fall theme going. And so in order to traverse the choppy water of autumn leaves, I had enlisted uh, Jedi Master Randy Buckner. May the guitar be with you. Yes. And also with you. Lift up your guitar. <laughs> all right. So anyway, all that, all that, exactly. All that to be said is, um, I, I mentioned, hey, would you do Autumn Leaves with me? Autumn Leaves for a lot of people is um, the first jazz song. What did, you had a really funny thing you said about. Um, yeah, my jazz instructor, uh, we played it one time and he smiled and he said, well, that's a very nice wedding reception version of the song. Now play it in a jazz fashion. <laughs> so, you know, this song does carry with it the stigma amongst, shall we say, uh, more of the, this may be a hot take, but more of the jazz elite. Mm -hmm. That this this is not like one that you're going to put on the, the you know, the set and, you know, and and get all the finger snaps at the, at the coffee shop. But... It's, it's a, a very cool version of it is Miles Davis and Cannonball Adderley on uh, the album's called Something Else. Yeah, and from in the fifties. It's they, a great song. It's mm -hmm. been around. It's been covered so much. But they did a cool version of it. Yeah, and I, I personally, I love uh, the Nat King Cole version. There's mm -hmm. also uh, Eva Cassidy. Mm -hmm. um, she has a great version of that. And then you were just talking about the Bill Evans version. It's right. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Bell Evans, the piano, not the saxophone. Yeah. We have two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so with that, we're going to take a look at it. It's in the key of E minor, um, and we're just going to jump right into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you kind of easy version first. There'll be some chords that if you've been hanging with us on chords and coffee, you know what a minor 7 flat 5 chord is, but if you don't, we'll explain it to you. And then after we do the easy version, then... I would love to hear you unpack, you know, some of these like tritone substitutions, especially on the bridge, because mm -hmm. there's a, a part that a lot of people do that with. And then also, you know, even just as we were just getting things set up and you were talking about using altered dominance and different mm -hmm. alt chords. If you ever looked at a chord sheet and you saw ALT and you thought, hey, I like alt rock, Stone do <laughs> It's not that. It's actually, it's actually, um, it's it sounds so complicated when you hear it because you know sharp nine flat nine sharp five mm -hmm. flat five but it's actually there's an easy way to think about it that will will be a lifesaver for you so let's just get right into it so autumn leaves starts out with a minor and generally for this this is where we ought to be doing bar chords by this point would you say as opposed to you don't have to do it down here but i feel like i don't do a lot of bar chords because oh, really? it puts that that fifth that crack that crashes into drums and piano. So okay. usually I drop that and I do more of like drop threes and drop twos where I'm going. Well, let's do it the way you do it. That's great. So you, so you're doing and when you say drop threes and drop twos, could you explain that really quick? Um, if you think of when you make a chord on the music staff and it looks like the ice cream cone. Yeah. C E G B. Yeah. So it's like a triad that's all sitting on top of mm -hmm. each other on on the staff of paper. So you take the second scoop from the top. Uh -huh. The G, drop it an octave, so now it's G C E B. Okay. And now we have this versus this. And some folks I've, I've heard will refer to that as a shell voicing. Is is that is or is that probably something? another term for it? Yeah, yeah. So we, we did a lesson on shell voicings a long time ago, and someone commented, oh, you mean drop two voicings. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe shell comes from the way the piano player approaches, like the, the, the physics of hitting the keys like that. But, so drop two, so we're looking and then at... drop three, which is what we'll be using, yeah. is we're going to drop the E now. So it goes down an octave, and it goes... Oh, that's cool. So, so voice this A minor chord the way that we should do it. 
Okay, so we're just going to do middle finger on the fifth fret of the low E, and then we're going to skip the A, skip the D, and then, or are you hitting that D? Oh, hit the D. Okay, so, so we're going to skip the A, and then you're going to have your ring finger on the fifth fret. So every, everybody's on the fifth fret, middle finger on the fifth fret of the low E, skipping the A, and then ring finger is going to hit the D, the G, and the B. Not worried about the high E, right? A very handy voicing for that. Very good. And so then now, how do you do the, the D7 there, which is the next chord? Uh, I actually substitute a D9 there. And Why so not? I just keep yeah. it. You know D9 and you don't, here it comes. Middle finger on the fifth fret of the low A, the, uh, the only A, the fifth fret <laughs> of the A, the index finger on the fourth fret of the D, and then your ring finger is going to be on the fifth fret covering the G, the B, and the, uh, the B. So, and I feel like we've done that before, but if we haven't, there it is. And that little 2 5 is obviously now it going shows to. shows up like in Santana. All over, all over the place, yeah. Now, how do you voice the G major 7, which comes next? The G major 7th is going to be this. We've also done this one before, too. It's a beautiful grip. You got index fingers going to hit the low E on the third fret. You can't help it, it's going to make an angle, which don't fight that. That's kind of what we want here because that ends up being a, a good thing to dampen the high E and the A string with. So, index finger is on that low E third fret, and then you're going to build an A minor. With your um, and kind of slide it up here, and so your ring finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the D, pinky's on the fifth fret, or fourth fret of the G, and then middle finger is on the third fret of the B. So think again, think of it as an A minor that you split up a whole step and then rearranged your fingers there to do that. Okay, so now we're on the Thank you for being my interpreter. No problem. <laughs> I'm thinking that way, but yeah, that's what I am. You, you talk faster than I do. We'd still be back on the A minor 7. Well, speaking of which, now C major 7 from here. So just good old straight ahead. Okay, so this is good old straight ahead, straight on Mel Bay, book number, page 5. Probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, yeah, index finger, third fret, straight across all of them. Okay, from the, a, from the A string all the way to the high E. Ring finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the D. Middle finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the G. And then pinky, fifth fret of the B. So, quick recap you've got. Minor seven flat five, and by the way, we're looking at this. Is this a? Is this? A, it's, just, the, it's the real book. Uh -huh. This is the uh, sixth edition of the real book. I think they're up like seven or eight by now. Yeah, and this is we. Palin Music has this. This is available just about everywhere. Hal Leonard is the publisher. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have one of these, even if you're like, Nate, I don't even like jazz. I'm just watching this episode to make you feel better about it. <laughs> right? You got some nice friends. Like, exactly. Well, thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> exactly. Um. Well, here's the deal. There's a lot of songs in here that even if you like them 40%, you ought to learn them because they will inform some of the songs that you really do like. Mm -hmm. And that's the key is that, quick side note, if you really want to learn how to sound like your favorite player, find out who their influences are. Yeah. Because when you find out who their influences are and actually you start studying on what inspired them, then all of a sudden you actually end up sounding more like, you know, so I'll give you an example. Like if you're like, man, I'm a huge Jimi Hendrix fan. Well, then you need to go back to not just, you know, Muddy Waters, but Lightning Hopkins. Lightning Hopkins, Buddy Guy. Yeah, and, and listen to them and dive deep and really, really get into it. Same thing with music. If you like songs, I mean, if you want to know who inspired some of your favorite songwriters, it's all these, you know, Tim Patton Alley guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. well, I was from... Now, some of these is from more into the early 20th century and mid-century. Yeah, quick tangent there. Now we're back. Okay, so now... Now we're back. A minor, D9, A minor 7, D9, G major 7, C major 7, F sharp, minor 7, flat 5. Yeah! What is that? It's just an A minor with an F sharp in the bass. Right? Yeah, I've seen it written both ways. I... The, the benefit of F sharp minor 7 flat 5, though, is that it tells you everything that's happening in the chord. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's also the 2 chord in E minor. Ooh, I want to go down that rabbit hole with you, but we're going to stay focused. All right, do you do this up here for this, or are you going to go down here? <laughs> 
Are you, are you doing it down I have here? a tendency to come up here because yeah. I'm heading toward this E minor. Gotcha. So when I'm picking chords, it's there's a few things at play. If I'm accompanying somebody, then I'm working around their melody. Mm -hmm. So I might be here and then go. So I might come up here just to create that. It's a point of interest. Or I'll just, or yeah. I might walk my way up here with the bass. I like that. And then it takes me into the B. Oh, that's and nice. E minor. So let's let's go ahead and learn it up here. So even though we're here on the C major seven at this so point. Five dollars for those chords. <laughs> exactly. That's a, per chord. I think that's a twenty dollar chord right there. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. fine. Inflation. There you go. Exactly. So you got your index finger on the ninth fret of the A. You've got your ring finger, believe it or not, on the tenth fret of the D. So right there. I know it feels scrunchy, but it'll make sense here in a second. Middle finger is going to be on the ninth fret of the G, and then pinky is going to be on the tenth fret of the B. Mm -hmm. And then now this this is calling for just a straight up B seven, but are you, I feel like you're doing more than that. Right. When I'm in a minor key, um, more often than not, I will play like a flat nine or a sharp nine or both. What about a sharp a, five, like an augmented thing? Is that? And that's actually buried in there with it. Seven, three, sharp five, flat nine, and then there's the sharp nine if I want to do that. Again, it depends on the soloist or the singer. Well, and but what's also great is what you're doing when you do that. So here's this chord. Randy's giving you a by giving you these fancier chords. They're not that hard to play. You're gonna do it today. Um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. There you go. And the deal is, is you're creating a counter melody so that the singer or the instrumentalist, or even if you're just playing by your lonesome, mm -hmm. you're creating a little quick point of interest. And it's not hard, so here it comes. So, now, you're not playing the bass note on that? You're just, oh, I am. Okay, gotcha. So you're doing it like this voice mm -hmm. in here? Okay, so from this F sharp minor seven flat five, okay, this might be the coolest curd, cur cur the cur coolest curd, <laughs> the coolest chord you learn all day. That is cheesy. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, we are a little cheesy. With pineapple? Exactly, okay. yeah. <laughs> Bear with us. This is going to be just a spontaneous free flow of conscious streaming that's recording. Us. Here we that's go. Why, that's why everybody loves us. That's exactly right. Index finger, seventh fret of the low E. Boom. Skipping the A. Middle finger, seventh fret of the D string. Now, stay with me. Ring finger is going to bar the G and the B. And that little bend right there, that's hard the first time you do it. Uh -huh. Right? But... There's something about it. It's like learning how to stand up on the pedals of your bicycle. Once you learn how to do it, it's like you can't undo it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And so then, Pinky is going to hit that 10th fret. Now, I know what you're saying. I'm on the 10th fret of the high E. I know what you're saying. You're saying that's that's a little too stretchy. But look at the benefit here. You get this great just by Pinky on, Pinky off. It's going to be voice leading. It's a nice little voice leading. Here. Yeah. What, voice what is voice leading? Talk about that. It's where I'm playing partially a melody, not necessarily from the chord, mm -hmm. but it's just I'm leading one chord into the other, usually chromatically or stepwise. Yeah. Rather than just kind of going from here. Yeah. You know, rather than that, it's a it's just a nice neat little package for that yeah. voice leading. So you want to think of that when you're playing chords and so as we get into it and we hot rod the chords so all that was voice licking that's beautiful so there's variations yeah. of an a minor seventh but just putting the notes on top of it to walk the listener and or soloist person into the next chord yeah it's, it's funny you say that because it it don't think of it as like an opportunity to show off is it's actually more an opportunity to help because mm -hmm. a lot of times especially when, when you're accompanying and it, if it's just a singer and you um that voice leading helps them to kind of know what's coming and yeah. it actually makes it easier makes it a lot easier for them versus just kind of jumping around you know and if you ever want to not get called back to a gig by a singer is to play too busy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's de there's definitely uh some discernment 
that, that is that is required of this. Okay, so quick recap. Yes. This this uh, two finger A minor seven to the D nine, right? Email me if, if you want a chart, and I'll I'll help you out on that. And then G major seven, Nate N A T E White W H I T E at PayOnMusic.com. Nate White at It's not the email you gave me. <laughs> the people I want to talk to. That's <laughs> that's the email. <laughs> And then, okay, so then G major 7, and then C major 7, and then F sharp minor 7 flat 5 right up here, and then this is a B alt, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, so what it, the reason it's an altered chord is because you have the third, but you have the sharp 5 and the sharp 9, and when you lift the pinky, you still have the sharp 5, but now you have the flat 9. So earlier in this video we said there's an easier way to think about that and easier is loose here because i don't know which is easier what i'm about to tell you or that but the other way to think about it is take the tritone of where you're at the tritone would be you know the uh you know the, the evil inter interval that you know no one ever wants to hear but just go up one two three four <laughs> i say have students go, I don't like that sound. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's... I'm not, and that's like, that was the reason I wanted to play. I love that little... Uh, is, that, is that Rush YYZ that does that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It might be. Anyway, might be. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a sharp four, flat five, right? And build that nine chord, that same D9, make an F9, add your pinky, and then now just put that over the B. And so you could think of a B alt, B7 alt as a um, F13 mm -hmm. over B. You want to move your, this guy over to the... There you go. There you go. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So you're just exchanging yeah. bass notes. You're going from here. Yeah. So it's, 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 an, it's, an, F, it's an F13 without the root note. Yes. In, in exchange for the B. I don't know if that clears it up or makes it more complicated, but that's all it is. So what that means is when you find that chord, if it works over an F13 chord, you can play it over, as you're soloing, you can play it over that B7 Exactly. Alt. Yeah, yeah. That's what a lot of us do. Yeah, so that little maneuver we just showed you, that's that B7 Alt, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then back to E minor. Yeah, and because you're in an E minor, you want you want to stay with like an actual minor or a minor major seven or a minor six. I or like if you that. really want mysterious minor six nine. Is that the James Bond chord? It's one of them. There's I've heard two different ones used. I've heard the minor six nine like this, but then I've also heard the minor major nine. Oh, that's the James Bond chord. So there. I heard both of them. It kind of depends on the era. Oh, interesting. For some interesting. That was for free. That okay. was free. Those that, chords are free. But that would be cool. Show them the, the last James Bond chord that the, the one last the second one? one? Yeah, the second one. So here it is. So what's the grip so on I'm that? So I'm on the 10th, 9th, 8th, and 7th. There it is. Oh, that's so cool. Boy, how did I would totally do that during this song. So what you got is you got your pinky on the 10th fret of the A. Ring fingers on the ninth fret of the D. Middle finger is on the sixth or the seventh fret. No, eighth fret. Sorry, can't count. Eighth fret of the G, and then index finger is on the seventh fret of the B. That's cool. Yeah. So. Um, oh yeah. That's a fifty dollar chord mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll send you a check. So now you do that again, mm -hmm. and then now we're on the B section. And the B section is, is it just backwards? Yeah, it just flips the script. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now we're doing the 2-5 in E minor, then the 2-5 in G. Meaning the second chord of the G, the fifth chord of the key, and the one. You have been talking to them about 2-5 <laughs> forms, have you not, young master Nate? Not enough. But we will get into that. If you're interested in having a 251 discussion, comment below. We'll talk about some 251s. Yeah, I have to talk to you about that. So it's the, same, it's the same chords in a different order, which you can totally do that. But what's interesting is there's a point in the B section where it goes to your point of these two fives. But sometimes there's another maneuver mm -hmm. that's done where they do the tritone sub. Could you yeah, unpack that? They like it. They, it was, they modernized it. So rather than the bass line going decided to go chromatic so you 
of. And then it goes to the. So, what it is when we do what's called a tritone sub. So, instead of going E minor to A7, we figured out that A7 and E flat 7 share the same tritones. Yeah. Which is why that A7 alt worked earlier. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle. But go ahead. Google tritone. But it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what it is, there's a flat 5 interval between these two notes, G and D flat. But then if I put the A, it becomes a G and a C sharp. Yeah, and actually, if you've been hanging with chords and coughs for a while, there was a lesson that we did where we did the tritone blues. Oh, sure. We did like the, you know, the... That kind of thing. I, I think it's just called tritone blues, and it, it's in there, but it, do you have a preference? Because to my ear, like, I, I don't know that I like the tritone thing better than the regular way. It has to be used judiciously, um, because... You can get by with it with some soloists. So sometimes you want it to go. Some people want the original. Yeah. Some people want. It. Now, if you get too crazy with tritone subs, then the singer will whack you. <laughs> right, because it gets harder and harder from doing. So here yeah. it comes real quick. So if I'm doing, if you were doing that, just the regular two five all the way down, would you do the like? A, are you doing this E minor nine? Right. A thirteen. Yeah, I have a tendency to add a lot of ninths. Okay, so E minor nine. Gotcha. So for the regular way, um, index finger. Well, let's do the middle finger first. Middle finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the A. Index finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the D. And then ring and pinky are right next to each other. Ring is on the G of the seven, and then pinky is on the B of the seven. Right? E minor nine. And then to this A13, is that how you were doing? In the original version? Uh, yes. Okay. And so then E minor what nine. you're doing, you're creating a pedal point there. With that exactly. I hope you caught that. What Randy's saying is, is that that first note, the F sharp, on that seventh fret, of the B is going to be in both of these chords, so the E minor 9, and then when you make the A13 with your index finger on the 5th fret of the low E, skipping the A, middle finger on the 5th fret of the D, and then ring finger on the 6th fret of the G, pinky hasn't moved. And then you just do the exact same thing, a whole step down. So we're building the D minor nine on the fifth fret. So middle finger, fifth fret of the A, index finger, third fret of the D, uh, ring, fifth fret of the G, pinky, fifth fret of the B. And then leave pinky there. Everybody else jumps up, goes to a new party. Index finger is going to be on the third fret of the low E, skipping the A, middle finger, third fret of the D, and then uh, ring finger, fourth fret of the G. And that's another good point. Just like this thing we did earlier, we went. This is a similar activity, but no, hardly any movement. Because right. it makes that pedal point. And that's beautiful. And that allows your soloist and or singer then to take more liberties with the melody. Because mm -hmm. you're pretty much stagnant except for the inner moving voice going. situations where the piano player would not get out of my way mm -hmm. so I finally ended up just playing the tritones and just because I couldn't hit the bass note bass had the piano was over there yeah, yeah. So, so that's what's going on that's in the middle of all of this is you're going that's nice now when you're doing the, the, the tritone subs are you doing the E minor 9 to just like that? You can also alter it and go. Ooh, I like that. You go to the 7 raised 9. It's so like the Hendrix chord? Yes. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Let's do that one. So the same E minor 9, and now you're just going to do the Purple Haze chord right underneath it. I'm sure that wasn't the first song that used that chord, but it 
gets credit for it. Way to go, Jimmy. <laughs> so th this is going to be, uh, so from the E minor 9, what's cool is, just like the pedal point that we did a second ago, pinky's not going to move. And so then you've got your middle finger is going to be on the uh, sixth fret of the A, index finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the D, and then ring finger is going to be on the sixth fret of the G. So, and then the exact same thing, just now, starting on D minor 9, that's hip. I like that a lot. And it's also pretty. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and with the, you know, the tense, you know, of the tension of that chromatic thing. And then, once you're down here, and then would you jump down to this chord for the, or would you jump back up here for the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 after? Do that, and then you kind of walk my way back up to the... Yeah. Oh yeah, guitar. <laughs> so that's a lot of chords that just came flying at your head. Um, this song is one that if you want to get started, just learn these basic grips and get to where you can play. And most of the time, this is at a pretty, is there a fast version that's out there? That's the Miles Davis Cannonball Adderley one. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah. nine times out of ten, this is a, this is kind of in a ballad. Kind it's of... usually a ballad, but then there was quite a few uh, bebop and hard bop players that would just, you know, go you know, just pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And just blaze right off the throat. Well, I tell you what, um, you probably have questions, and if you do, I don't know if you know this, but um, not only do you give, I mean, you're basically here teaching lessons almost all day. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of online lessons, too. Yes. Yeah, and... Um, there's a couple different ways if you're interested in online lessons from Randy, uh, you can, you know, call the store anytime, you know, contact information's there. Um, but they can also, um, you're on all the socials and, and you're available. Actually, if you go to our website, there's a way where they can actually sign up even easier. Yeah, that right? would be the easiest. Yeah, just go to the palemusic.com website, go to the Springfield store. Um, you give lessons to people in England. Mm -hmm. England, uh, in Greece, uh... And then different states, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, Delaware. And some of those lessons, because of the time change, are at weird times of day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the student in England, he would, he would take lessons. It would, it would be like 7 or 8 o'clock at night, his time. Yeah. So, if you're watching this, and the, you know, as far as the internet will go, which I'm somewhere on Earth, mm -hmm. you, could, you can connect with Randy. And you can really learn the ins and outs of this song as well as lots of different stuff. I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. You're an awesome guitar player and a great teacher. Thank you. Yeah, next time we'll get into what kind of scales we can use over this stuff. Yeah, if you're interested in that, put it below in the comments section. Yeah, I'd unpack that some more. Or let me see, because this is, there's a whole other version. When we were talking about this tune, you started going through it. You've got a, a whole other layer of complexity that sounds just absolutely outrageously beautiful over this. So, Randy, I don't know if you know this or not, but this is the most encouraging group of guitar players out there on the face <laughs> of the internet. I've heard. I've that's heard that. right, Will. It's the word on the street is that's the deal. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week for another Chords and Coffee.